This is the new estate version of the Mercedes CLS and it's an estate car for people who think they're way too cool to drive an estate car. And that's why Mercedes call it the CLS shooting brake. Yes, it's hard to believe something this good looking can also be very practical. But Mercedes have only gone and managed it, you know, with this stunning machine. Well done then. Now if you're wealthy and you have a dog, you're going to like this car because its boot is actually bigger than on most estate cars. I mean, if you look in there, you can see there's easily enough room for a Labrador, and you know how big and fat they can get. In fact, the only boot that I can think that's bigger is on the E-Class estate, and of course that's boxy and nowhere near as good looking as this model. In the front, the shooting brake feels exactly the same as the normal CLS. The cabin is suitably posh, and comes packed with plenty of gadgets to keep you entertained and safety kit to keep you safe. However, in the back, there is one key difference which makes the shooting brake version a lot more practical. Can you guess what it is? Come on, have a go. You give up? Okay, well, I wouldn't be able to sit here in the back of the normal CLS because it's a only a two-seater. This one has a bench across the back, which means you've got a seat here, though admittedly you won't want to go too far as an adult, but it'd be fine for children. Now another feature of the shooting brake CLS is that it has a higher roof line, so there's more headroom than in the saloon version, which means it's going to be better in the back for people over six foot. Thankfully, despite the slightly larger body and a smidge more weight, the shooting brake drives just as well as the normal CLS. It's got sharp steering, there's plenty of grip and it handles well in the corners. The CLS shooting brake is only available with three engines, but forget the noisy entry-level diesel or the costly turbo V8 petrol, the three-litre diesel is the one to go for. That engine really suits this car extremely well because it's fast yet it's economical, it's smooth and quiet and it works very well with a slick seven speed automatic gearbox. In fact overall this car is a great long distance cruiser, it's quiet at speed, the seats are extremely comfortable and while some people may find the ride a bit firm, for just a thousand pounds you can upgrade to optional air suspension and it has a comfort mode. An option I suggest to avoid, however, is the cherry wood lining for the boot. Now, this car doesn't actually have it, so I'll show it you quickly with a cutaway. Now, the problem with that is twofold. The first is that if you have that fitted to your car, when you go around a corner, your big fat Labrador will just slide about all over the place, and their claws will probably scratch it to pieces. That brings me on to the second problem. The cherry wood lining actually costs £4,000. As for other problems, well, as I complain about with most Mercedes, the steering wheel is off-centre, it's slightly to the left, and that means you can feel a bit twisted behind the wheel. It also comes with a foot-operated parking brake, which is just so old-fashioned. And if I'm honest, the rear visibility, it's not that great for an estate car. Finally, the shooting brake isn't the best estate car for carrying your garden rubbish, as its total load space is less than an Audi A6 Advance, and it has an annoying boot lip too. But let's be honest, you're going to look a lot cooler arriving at your local tip in this than you would in a normal estate car. But then it's not an estate car, is it? It's a shooting brake, which is completely different. Mm -hmm.